Today on Cooking with Lauren K, we are going to be making these delicious pulled pork barbecue sandwiches. Look how delicious those look with my Southwestern spice mix, which you can find in the previous video. Enjoy. Lauren Kalawak here. I'm here with another dish to share with you. This one uses the crock pot, uh, some pulled pork tenderloins and a spice mix that we made in a previous video. Uh, I have a old spice container that I used to store the spice mix that I made in one of my previous videos. So this is a Southwestern spice mix. It has two tablespoons of brown sugar, one tablespoon paprika, one tablespoon chili powder, one tablespoon of cumin, one tablespoon of garlic powder, and a teaspoon of each salt and black pepper. So I mix that up in a small bowl. My boys helped me do that. So that's a way that you can get kids involved in helping you make spice mixes. Doesn't have to be all of these spices together. It can be your own mix as well. Just be cautious about using things like cayenne pepper and red pepper flakes. Those can add a lot of heat in a very small amount of those spices. So this is the one that I'm gonna use. Uh, before I start this dish, I'm going to pour some of that that I think that I'm gonna use in a bowl so that I don't have to touch this spice container with my contaminated pork hands, if you wanna call it that. We're gonna be using this spice mix to make a pulled pork barbecue sandwich. You can have it with or without a bun. If you have a Lauren K cookbook, Lauren K cookbook, it is on page 128. The spice mix recipe is on there as well as how to make this pork. So if you have one of those, you can use that. If not, you can click in the recipe that is attached to this video. So I have my spice mix ready. I might end up using more of that if I need to, uh, but I don't want to use all of it and touch that with my hands if I don't have to. So this recipe starts with a crock pot and I'm going to spray my crock pot with some cooking spray to prevent some sticking, make for some easy cleanup later. And then that is ready to go. I have um, three, you can use, the recipe calls for three. I actually have four pounds of pork tenderloin. You can use pork butt or another cut of pork if you want to. Even pork chops, I guess, could work for this. They come in a package like this at the grocery store. Uh, usually they're in between one and a half to three pounds. So you need three to four pounds for this recipe. So I like to have a garbage can right next to me. So when I'm, when I'm cutting this open, I can pop that uh, outside plastic right into the garbage can. And I've already done that with those two. Those two were actually one package and they came in two tenderloins. And let's see, this one is gonna be the exact same. So what we're gonna do is take our spice mix and put it on all sides of the pork. And you just wanna press that in. A rub, which is what we have here, is a dry mix of spices and herbs that you use to coat a piece of meat. You can also coat vegetables if you want to, but it gives a lot of flavor on the outside. And the nice thing about this recipe is that it cooks in the crock pot for seven to eight hours on low and then you shred the pork. So literally you can get this all ready in the morning before you go to work or you, before you spend your day at home, working from home, does it for you. And then by the end of the day, you have dinner. So that's what's gonna happen today. So I'm gonna take these covered pork tenderloins, look how good that looks, pop that into the bottom of your crock pot, get up all those nice spicy bits there. I'm gonna do the same thing with these two tenderloins. Get that one on there as well. Make sure for safety that if you have rings, bracelets, hair ties, things like this, when you're using um, pork or anything that is raw that you take off rings and anything that could be a holder of bacteria. Sometimes I've touched raw meat and had my rings on and then that bacteria gets underneath there and then I kind of get a rash under my ring. So you definitely want to take those off. Um, and then make sure that whenever you do touch any type of raw meat that you wash your hands immediately. Don't touch anything until you've washed your hands very thoroughly. And then I like to sanitize the surface underneath to make sure that I don't have any bacteria lingering on my counter. So uh, that was the perfect amount for these four tenderloins here. I'm gonna wash my hands. All right, so I've washed my hands. I've cleaned up my counter a little bit. I'm ready to finish off the pork that is in my crock pot and get that plugged in and cooking for the rest of the day so it's done in time for dinner. I'm gonna take a cup of chicken broth. If you don't have chicken broth on hand, that's okay. You can use water instead, but we wanna get a little bit of moisture into the pot 
so that it's not cooking and drying out in the crock pot. So I'm gonna put what is gonna be close to about a cup of chicken stock. Another way that I kind of eyeball this is that the water comes almost to the level of my pork and that's gonna give some good moisture as your pork cooks. I'm gonna close my crock pot here. I'm gonna plug this in on low for seven to eight hours and then I'll show you how to finish this with some buns and some barbecue sauce. This is actually my favorite barbecue sauce. So see you in eight hours. All right, so it has been roughly eight hours. I've had my pork on low in my crock pot, simmering away with that Southwestern spice and the chicken stock. So I'm gonna show you how to finish this off and get our pork shredded. So you need two tools, well, three tools, I guess. A pair of tongs and two forks. So, looks like this when it comes out. It should almost fall apart when you use your tongs to bring it into the big bowl that you have ready beside. If you have any giant pieces of fat like that, you don't want those. I'm going to put those maybe off to the side. I actually would have grabbed a bowl right now, but I don't have a bowl beside me, but that's okay. Um, Put those into your bowl like that. I ended. I used about six of the tenderloins in here. Let me grab all those in there. All right, that looks good. Now, don't dump all that juice quite yet. We may need a little bit of that to mix in to moisten the meat up if it's a little bit dry. So you're gonna take your fork and you're just going to shred apart your fork. I've seen methods where people use the electric hand mixers to mix their meat for pulled pork. I really, I think it kind of like mushes it up too much. I really don't like that method. I prefer to let the pork cook longer on low, like eight hours and just shred it myself. And as you can see how easy this is, this is shredding apart so wonderfully. And if you find once you get it all shredded that it seems a little bit dry, you can take a ladle and add some of that liquid back into your pork here. What I do, once I establish that like, this is what my pork, what, what I want my pork to be, seems moist, tastes really good, I take out that liquid, stick it into a separate bowl, and then I put my pork back into my crock pot. If you wanna add barbecue sauce at that point, you can. I like to have people add their own barbecue sauce because then you can use the pork for more things for leftovers. Um, I like to do this in a pulled pork nacho, which I bought some tortilla chips and some scallions for later this week. So I'll be doing that in uh, a couple upcoming days. So I like to just keep it plain, but you, if you're serving crowd and you want pulled pork sandwiches with the barbecue sauce on it already, that is completely up to you. So um, I will show you what this looks like in a minute. All right, so we have our pulled pork all shredded in our crock pot, and I have some buns for you here. I have some brioche buns. I have some Pacifico buns. You could use pias for this. Uh, you can use French bread. Whatever you have on hand is fine. I actually like to use, I like to eat the pork with nothing as well, so you can do that if you're looking for a low-carb option. So I'm going to put some pork on that sandwich there, about four, uh, four ounces of pork and it makes 12 sandwiches. So if you have a crowd coming over, you know, like three months from now, or if you wanna make, you know, makes a lot of, of sandwiches, we're gonna put some barbecue sauce on top of there, have some background guitar music going on. And that is what our sandwiches are gonna look like. And this pairs really well with the sweet potato fries in another video that I have. So I hope that you give that a try. And I'm gonna take a bite here in just a few minutes. And these sandwiches, in case you're wondering, 390 calories and it makes 12 sandwiches for around 16 bucks. So it's a great low cost option. If you have leftover pork, that you don't know what to do with, you can freeze it in a freezer bag. Um, you can use it in other recipes like pulled pork nachos or a barbecue pork pizza or a soup or some type of stir fry. So I hope that you enjoy um, this. I know that I will in just a few minutes. Take care.